Google officially announced that neural networks are now helping to write viruses. Elon Musk and his Neuralink are letting a paralyzed guy control a plane with his mind. Sam Altman is making shocking claims about GPT. Six becoming our scientific co-author, and a Chinese company is showing off a kung fu master robot. What's up, everyone? Get in here for another dump of the freshest AI news. Let's get into it. All right, first stop, OpenAI. Sam Altman, on the Conversation with Tyler podcast, painted a picture of a future where GPT-6 isn't just an upgrade, but a quantum leap. If GPT-5 already occasionally throws ideas to scientists or helps with calculations, then GPT-6, according to Sam, will become a full-fledged scientific co-author. Imagine this. The AI itself generates hypotheses, plans experiments, and guides researchers toward discoveries on a systemic level. We'll have to wait until 2006, though. Yes, you heard that right. Altman emphasizes that there's no room for rushing. It needs the most serious testing for reliability and safety. But that's not all. He proposed a crazy experiment, the AI director. The idea is to take one department within a company and put it entirely under AI management. The model will get access to data, plan tasks itself, set priorities, and monitor their execution. And here's the key prediction. According to Altman's estimates, AI will take over 70 to 85% of office routine in the coming decades. What will be left for humans is strategy, oversight, and a stop button if something goes wrong. Sam himself said it would be a disgrace if OpenAI weren't one of the first companies to try this on themselves. And an important nuance. Despite all its power, GPT-6 won't replace human intuition and cultural context. In creative fields, like poetry for example, living authors will remain unrivaled. So AI is a future partner, not a replacement. While OpenAI is focused on software in China, the company Xpeng, known for its electric cars, showed off a humanoid robot named Iron. And they're calling it nothing less than a kung fu master. Look at its movements, fluid, precise, filled with a certain philosophy. The developers emphasize not combat effectiveness, but balance, control, and harmony between movement and stillness. It looks so lifelike that it commands respect, like a true martial arts master, just one assembled from metal and wires. For Xping, this is another step toward creating full-fledged human-like systems that in the future will not only be able to help with household chores, but also possess some kind of internal world. Now let's move on to what makes the future a reality today. Elon Musk's company Neuralink showed an incredible case study. A paralyzed patient, Alex Connolly, who lost mobility after a neck injury, managed to control a radio-controlled airplane using a neural interface with the power of thought. Using the Neuralink implant, he wrote code for an Arduino that allowed him to issue mental commands to the plane. This isn't just a cool experiment. It's a real-world example of how technology gives people back lost abilities and grants new freedom. Imagine, the brain becomes a full-fledged controller. Millions of people watched the video of his flight, and Alex himself thanked Elon Musk and the Neuralink team for allowing him to feel control again. This is the future, and it's already here. But where there are bright sides to technology, unfortunately, dark sides also emerge. Google has documented a new dangerous phase of artificial intelligence abuse. Malicious programs are now learning to change their behavior on the fly, using large language models as an active component. We're talking about the so-called just-in-time approach. Instead of writing all the malicious code in advance, the malware queries LLMs in real time, like Gemini or models from Hugging Face, for pieces of code, obfuscation instructions, or commands to execute. This allows them to create dynamic, fast-changing samples that traditional signature-based antiviruses simply can't detect in time. The Google Threat Intelligence Group report describes entire families of such malware. For example, PromptFlux is a dropper using a VBA script that calls an LLM API to rewrite and mask its own source code. Syncing Robot is a module that periodically pulls a model and asks it for ways to bypass antiviruses. And PromptSteal disguises itself as an image generation program while actually stealing data. 
But what's truly frightening is the commercialization of cybercrime. Underground forums now offer subscription services, from generating phishing emails to creating malicious code with API access. This lowers the barrier to entry, and now even inexperienced attackers can launch serious attacks. Google is, of course, taking measures, blocking accounts, improving security systems, but the report clearly states traditional defense methods are no longer coping. New, more dynamic approaches are needed. Aware of such risks and the scale of AI's influence, the company DeepSeek, which usually avoids the spotlight, made an important statement. Their senior researcher, Chin Delhi, warned that we should expect massive changes in the labor market in the next five to 10 years. Right now, we're in a kind of honeymoon phase with AI. It helps, boosts productivity, and doesn't seem like a threat. But this phase will end when systems become truly autonomous and start replacing entire professions. To avoid shock, DeepSeek proposes creating a transparency mechanism, a kind of whistleblower system. Companies implementing AI should publicly report cases of layoffs due to automation so that society sees the real impact of the technology and understands what retraining programs or compensations are offered to people. Admittedly, this raises a bunch of questions. Who will collect this data? How to avoid a formalistic approach? And how to agree on global coordination, especially amid the rivalry between the US and China? But the very fact that this is being talked about shows, the industry is beginning to recognize its social responsibility. Interestingly, against the backdrop of all these discussions, the Chinese company Moonshot AI created the Kamiko 2 thinking model, whose training, according to CNBC, cost only four to six million dollars. This is an incredibly low sum, especially when compared to Western counterparts, training GPT, for was estimated at 63 to 78 million and developing Grok, for cost almost half a billion. Kamiko 2 thinking is a large model with a mixture of experts architecture that uses a trillion parameters, but only a portion of them are activated. If this data is confirmed, it would be a landmark achievement, showing that it's possible to create powerful AI with relatively modest resources. Perhaps Chinese researchers have found a way to make AI not only smarter, but also much cheaper. Now, let's come down to earth for a second. In San Francisco, an ordinary Safeway store on King Street has become the subject of controversy. They installed a new anti-theft system, turnstiles at the entrance that open automatically, but to exit, you have to go through the checkout and scan your receipt. If you try to leave through the entrance, an alarm goes off. Customers complain that they can't simply leave if they change their mind about buying something or can't find what they need. They have to call security. Safeway explains this by a rise in shoplifting in San Francisco. The same problem faces retailers all over the world. In the UK, Tesco is testing a system of floor scales that compare the weight of a shopping basket upon entry and exit. Amid all these events, Microsoft is offering its own philosophy for AI development. The head of Microsoft AI and co-founder of DeepMind, Mustafa Suleiman, presented the concept of humanist superintelligence, HSI. He says humanity has crossed an important threshold. Machines are already reasoning better than people. But instead of racing for limitless capabilities, we need to ask, why do we need superintelligence? Microsoft proposes creating not an all-powerful and autonomous AI, but systems that remain under human control and solve specific tasks in medicine, education, energy. A special team called My Superintelligence Team has been created under Suleiman's leadership. Their goal is to develop technologies that augment humans, not replace them. Suleiman admits, the smarter the models become, the harder it is to guarantee their controllability. He calls the task of controlling superintelligence one of the most difficult in human history and advocates for international cooperation and unified rules. The main idea is that technology should serve people, not the other way around. Well, guys, that's all from me. Hope it was interesting. As you can see, the future is already here. It's frightening, exciting, and most definitely not boring. Smash that like button if you learn something new, subscribe to the channel, and wait for the next episodes. See you in the next videos.